Hey everybody, I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be doing this patch with the glittered background and the threaded wording and border. Now this is using heat transfer vinyl for the background and 40 weight polyester thread for the border and the wording. I'm going to use twill for my base fabric that I'm going to put the heat transfer vinyl onto and then I'm going to use a water soluble stabilizer and let's get going. I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so for this particular patch, I'm going to use a different color vinyl where I use the black glitter vinyl for this patch. The next set, I'm going to actually use silver for the background. So when I say that this is a heat transfer vinyl, it is just that. This is Caesar Easy Weed glitter vinyl. And what I have to do, because it comes on a carrier sheet, because it's initially designed so that people who use vinyl cutters, like I have a silhouette uh, cameo cutter, they'll put it on face down and they'll reverse the design on their computer program and cut it. Well, I'm not doing all of that. I'm going to just peel it off of the carrier sheet. And this is um, an irregularly cut piece because I used it for another project, but it'll be fine. So I'm going to take it off of this sheet. The carrier sheet itself is sticky, but the vinyl is not sticky. Okay. The backside has a heat uh, sensitive uh, adhesive on the back. So what that means is when you iron it down, it's going to stick to the fabric that it's on. And so with that being said, I'm going to be applying this on top of twill. I'm not going to iron it down immediately, but I will show you every step that I take to make these patches. Okay. So now I've got the vinyl off of the carrier sheet and you see, this is the carrier sheet, that clear plastic, that's essentially trash. Now I'll throw that away. And what I'll do is how I start all of my patches. I'm going to hoop some, sorry, my kid is playing video games. I'm going to hoop some water soluble stabilizer. And this is Vileen. I like this because it doesn't tear as quick as some of the other uh, water soluble stabilizers do but it's okay. And then I'm also going to use twill. Now, you know me by now. And if you've been following any of my videos, I don't, uh, trying to get the extra lint off. I don't, um, hoop a lot of my fabrics. And for this, because of the technique that I'm using to make this patch, I definitely don't want to hoop it in there. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to pin the twill down. And I'm going to then put it in the machine to run the placement marks so that I'll see exactly where the patch design is going to be stitched. Okay. I don't want to do that with the glitter on it. So I'm just going to put a couple more pins in here just to make sure it's not going to shift or anything. Okay, I've got that pinned down. I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to run the placement stitch. Okay, so I've got it on my machine. I'm going to lower the pressure foot. I'm going to hit start and it's going to stitch out the first step, which is the placement line for the patch. And this essentially is just an applique design. Um, I did put the wording and everything together to create the patch myself. I honestly do not know what fonts I use though, because I designed this a few months ago and I don't know what the designs are. I know that they are two different fonts. So those are stitched out now. I'm going to take it off of the machine. I am going to then put the vinyl in place and I'll do that now. Alrighty. I'm always picking up strings and lengths. So now 
This is the heat transfer vinyl. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up so that I have all of it covered as far as the placement lines are concerned. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna iron it yet. I'm just gonna tack it down in a couple of places with some straight pin. No, I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna puncture holes in it. I'm gonna iron it down just a little bit. And I know in my previous video using the glitter with the rose, I don't believe I ironed it at all while it was in the hoop. But this time I don't want it to slide. I really don't want to puncture the glitter because whatever glitter I don't use, I'm going to try and save it for another project. Okay. So now I've got it ironed slightly in place. I'm going to take it back to the machine. Actually it's ironed pretty good in place. I'm going to take it back to the machine and I'm going to stitch the next step. Okay, so now I've got it back on the machine and it is stitching out the second step, which is the wording that says hustle girl. I'm not going to record all of the stitching because it's just stitching. There's nothing different going on there. Um, this part is about 13 minutes long as far as the stitching is concerned. So I will let this run its course and I will check back with you when it's time for the next step. Alrighty, so step two is done. Now step three will just be the outline box and I'll stitch that next without even taking it out of the hoop. Because what we'll do after this step stitches, I'll take it out of the hoop, I'll trim it up, and then we'll do the satin stitch that will actually give it that patch look. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take it out of the machine and I am going to get it cleaned up for that final step. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'm going to take all of these pins out for starters. And I've got some pins under here. Don't want to mess around and leave those in. Okay, and now I'm going to trim everything up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in from this side cause I don't wanna cut a line through that vinyl over on that side. I told you I'm gonna try and save some of the vinyl. So I'm gonna cut here and then I'll cut up if I can without tearing up too much. And once I get the vinyl that I want to save set aside, I'm going to come through with the curved scissors so that I can get as close as possible. Okay. Don't need the twill, but that's enough vinyl almost. Yeah, I could probably get two more patches out of that vinyl. So I'm going to just set that aside for now. And I'm going to go through. I'm still using these little, I think these are Fiskars. But they do the job, so I'm not worrying about them. And I'm just going to cut as close as I possibly can along the line. And this is where it will help you if you're going to be using glitter or anything with a whole bunch of different crazy colors. Um, it'll help you to use a thread that is contrasting so that you can actually see your stitch line. Um, I've done a couple different projects where I had to really fumble to figure out where the thread was at because it just disappeared right on into the, vi uh, into the vinyl, especially when you're working with this glitter. I clipped that stitch a little bit. You definitely don't want to clip all up on the stitches.
and I do like to try to get a little bit closer and if you want you can go around the uh, edges with some fray excuse me fray check but I'm not going to do it because the fray check isn't going to sink into the vinyl. It'll just sit on top of it. You would have to do the fray check from the back side if you were going to do it at this point. And with the vinyl, it's pressed down. Where it's pressed really good, that, that fabric shouldn't fray as far as the twill is concerned. So I'm not going to worry about the fray check. But I am going to try to continue trimming. So I can get this cleaned up. And you can use this technique pretty much with any applique. And you can do it if you're, you know, wanting to do an applique on a bag or a shirt. It's not limited to just patches. This isn't something that you can only do with patches. And I've got a few different shirts that I think I'm going to try to record if my son will quit screaming while he's playing video games but I'm going to try to record a couple of different shirts that I'm going to do some of them are not embroidery they're just vinyl but um they come out pretty neat I like the way they're done and somebody might you know want a video on how I do this so I'm going to keep it to myself for now. I've got a couple of things lined up in my mind. But as soon as I can, I will do them and record them. Okay, I think I nipped that a little too close. But we're going to find out. The truth will tell in the end when you do that final stitch. Okay, so I've got this pretty much cleaned up. I'm going to take it back to the machine and I'm going to run that final stitch, which is the satin stitch that goes around it. Okay. Alrighty, so we are back to the machine and I am going to just run the final stitch, which is the satin stitch that will go around it and it'll give it that patch look. So that's the final step for the stitching part. And then it's just a matter of cleaning it up and putting the heat adhesive on the back to make it an iron-on patch, which although I make them as iron-on patches, I always recommend that the patches get some tack stitches uh, with needle and thread. Just because if you're going to wash something, Iron-on patches will stay on for a little while, but they're not going to stay on forever. They stay on best if you are if you're able to sew them on. So it's doing all the steps that it needs to do to get that satin stitch prepped and put down. And I'll check back in as it gets a little further along. Okay, we've got a little bit of progress here. Moving right along, it's getting a nice satin stitch going all the way around. Okay, so it is done stitching out. I'm going to take it off of the machine. Looks pretty good. So what I'll do next is I'm going to go to the table. I'm going to trim it so I can get it out of the out of the hoop and get it cleaned up alrighty so we're just gonna take it out of the hoop first of course I'll sit that over there and I'm gonna just trim a little bit of this off I'm not gonna trim just a little bit I'm gonna trim as much as I can without cutting the stitches this is what happens when you're crafting after dark. Okay. And let's see here. Almost done. Okay, so now I have this um, 
trimmed out. I will go through the back, clip all the extra threads that are sticking up. Sorry, could you see that up here? All those extra threads that are sticking up, I will go through and just clip those to make sure that they don't get caught in or to make sure they're not up underneath the um, heat adhesive when I put it on. And then sometimes I will try to go through and get some of this stabilizer out before I actually iron it down. It is water soluble, but I don't want to get my patch wet through through and through. Okay. So I'm going to trim some of that out. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get a Q-tip with some warm water to dab along the edges so that the water soluble stabilizer does dissolve from around the edges to give it a nice clean look. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second here. Okay, so I got a small cup with some hot water, a Q-tip, and I'm going to show you how I go about cleaning up the edges. It's real simple. I just dip it in the water and I dab it along the edge. And you can, hopefully you can see how the... Uh, Violin, which is a water soluble stabilizer, how it just dissolves. Let's see, can you see it better if I do it like that? The stitches on the borders don't always come out as neat as I would like. And they don't always have to, except there's an OCD part of me that says that, yes, they should come out perfectly neat every time you do it. But yeah, just go through, dab on it. And that will get the extra water soluble stabilizer off. And I really like the way this black on top of the silver came out. I think that looks pretty. Actually, I like that better than the other two. And when I say other two, it's because I did the black glitter with the pink. And then I did a rose pink glitter with the black. But um, I definitely like the silver with the black thread best. That's just me. Okay, so after you've got that all dabbed off, the next step that you're going to do, you want to let it dry a little bit and you can help it dry by ironing it or just let it dry in front of a small fan or something or just let time, by, time go by and let it dry. Your next step after it dries will be to put the heat and bond or whatever heat adhesive you're gonna use on the back. And now when I say heat and bond, this is the heat and bond that I use. Sorry for bumping the camera. It is the heat and bond ultra hold, okay? It's not the heat and bond light. Heat and bond light is not gonna do a whole lot for you. And honestly, um, I do prefer something stronger than ultra hold. I just have not placed any orders online lately. You girl been real lazy. So I'm going to trim this so that it will be just outside of it. Outside of the patch. Okay. What I do, these are just shop cloths. You can use paper towel or whatever you choose. But I, you don't want to mess your ironing board up and you don't want to mess your iron up. So what I do is just like this. I'll have my paper towel down. I have this lined up so that I know where it's going. I'm going to flip it upside down, lay it down here. My iron is set to where the steam is not coming out. It's a dry iron and this is a very old iron. Hold it down for a few seconds and then you're going to let, let it cool. 
You want to let it cool before you even attempt to take that paper um, off. Not the paper towel, but the paper period. And sometimes you will find that the, um, what is this called? <laughs> the vinyl might bubble up a little bit when you're ironing the back of it. It will be okay. I'm just going to pat it down. It's very hot. And now starting to cool along the edges. What I do is trim it just to make it look neat. You don't want to have a whole lot on there. Got caught up on my scissors. And I do not use my fabric scissors for trimming this stuff. And now it's on here and it feels pretty cool. What I'll do is I just want to take one end and peel it back a little bit just to be sure it did adhere. So that black is from probably the dye out of the thread pressing against the uh, adhesive. But I can see the shiny on the back of the patch. So that tells me that it did adhere. And so I'm going to just leave that there. It's not going to stick all the way back down, but I'm going to leave it there because I know that it's there and it's good to go. Okay. Like I said before, I always advise people when they put these patches on, yes, they are designed so that you can iron them on, but because I'm not using a industrial type of heat press heat applied adhesive right now, I do advise people to just do a few tack down stitches along the border. So this is black thread on the border. They would just get some black thread in a needle and stitch, you know, and they don't have to go the whole length of, you know, satin stitch. They just need to go through a few tack stitches so that it holds in place. And that's it. It is able to be washed because this is vinyl that is designed to go on your clothing. So that's not going to be a problem. And then of course we know that the thread for embroidery is designed to be um, washed as well. So tell me what you think of it. Tell me if you've tried this, if you like it, if you hate it, um, just let me know. But I thank you. Alrighty. So that was it. That is the patch. This is the one that I showed you earlier. And this is the same patch with a different color glitter and different color thread. And it's ready to go. So tell me how you like it. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, notification. Hit don't recommend this channel again, <laughs> whatever. But I'm glad that you watched. I do hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something. Thank you.